Hi, I'm Ben Bing, and uh, the fly I'd like to tie for you here is the CDC Yellow Sally. And uh, it's a very simple tie, and it's basically just a CDC kind of elk, elk care caddis style of tying, but I, I'm going to change it up so that it'll look like a Yellow Sally. I have in here 1190 Daiichi 14 hook. And on this hook, I'm basically going to be tying, it's a size 14, but I'm tying a size 12 fly. So I'm oversized, you know, over tying the fly. So keep that in mind as I tie it. Uh, yellow thread to basically match the wing and the end result here. And as always, I like to dub, I like to, excuse me, sit there and do a good solid thread base on my hook before I start tying my fly. It makes more durable fly. Depending on what part of the country you come from, yellow sallies could have a real distinctive red or almost like an orange butt in the back end of them. So I'm just going to use, uh, this This is some Trout Hunter uh, orange dubbing right here, and I only need just a tiny little bit. And we'll start that up on there. Just a tiny little skosh, as some would say. Slip that up and dub the back end here a little bit with this orange go forward with it and I'm actually now the main part of the body of the yellow sally is of course yellow and this is just some super fine pale morning yellow dubbing really super, it's just great stuff to dub with it's real easy take a nice little wisp of that and get that started slide that up and I'm using my index finger go a couple wraps around and just kinda if I keep pushing my index finger up so it goes counterclockwise around the thread, then I can build my body up and it kind of twists tighter as I'm going clockwise going around here. See how that works, it just tightens it up. So I'm gonna come back over this. They got kind of a little chunky little body. So that just almost kind of marries up to that, that distinctive orange part. And then rather than sit there and keep adding a whole bunch of dubbing to it, I wanna make me a nice little smooth tapered body here. I'll add more dubbing to it rather than just keep adding it all at the same time and then make a big huge mess. That's pretty good. So I dubbed it basically up on the hook shank where I gave myself enough room here to, to install the wings and all the other components of the fly. And for the wing and for the underwing I'm going to use this pale yellow, but this is really some bright yellow CDC from Trout Hunter. And what I'm going to look for is, this is kind of a short little feather. That's not going to work for me. That's a little bit too long, you know, large feather, a lot of material too much. But if I get a couple of nice feathers of this medium kind of size feathers, that's what I'm looking for to match them up. So I think that and that one will do right there. So as you notice, these feathers are kind of cupped. One's kind of swinging this way and that way. What I want to do is I actually want to take these feathers and put them so that like their hands are clapped together, basically, or like two spoons facing each other like that, so that the wing, they're coming in together, so it almost makes like a nice edge, flat edge like that. Clean out the bottom in here of all this stuff right here. We don't need that. Let's look at the stems. and. Then in my hands, I can sit there and take these tips to where they almost line up on the end here, even by rotating my thumb and index finger back and forth, sliding them in and out. I'm going to hold these tips here and then kind of gather this stuff up and move my fingers forward to where I can knead my wing up into about the right amount that I want. Right there. Now this wing here on Ellis Sally has got a little bit more elongated body, so it's actually going to go past the hook shank just a tad bit on here. That's the proportion we're looking at for the wing. Pat that down real good. Now I'm going to keep my thread and my material as I go forward with my thread I'm keeping material on top of the hook going towards the eye and I'm building up like a little collar area. This is where we're going to hack a wing. Right there. Just like that. And I don't trim this out at this time because I'm going to use these in the end to form our head when we cut them off. 
and when I need to whip finish it, I need to move it out of the way so I get to the eye of the hook to put the whip finish in. So we'll leave that in there for now. It's not going to hurt nothing. Um, for the overwing, caddis have a really veiny kind of wing that lays on top of it. So I'll just grab some of this partridge. It's got a diffuse kind of look um, to it. Speckled, if you could say it's like looking like it's speckled. So I'll just take one of these feathers, clean it up. So I got basically a feather like that. You see one side's dull and one side's kind of shiny. I'm going to put it so it's cupped down on top and the shiny side up. And I'm going to lay that right on top of the silver wing here. Just like that. And then just with the thread lightly so it doesn't go all over the place, just kind of kind of secure that down. And then now put a little bit tighter wraps as I'm tightening in a little bit more and more and more. Kind of getting putting a little more pressure on it. And that's in there perfect. Um, on, on yellow sallies and stuff, they tend to have a couple tails out the back and a couple antennae in the front. So what I'm going to use is, is um, in, in, you know, a lot of times people tend to call uh, sal uh, little sally imitations sparkle sallies or flash sallies or have a little bit of sheen to them. So what I like to do is, is just to jazz this thing up and give it a little bit of like the legs kicking out in an antennae is I'm going to put in some of this Mirage flash. And here's a really cool trick that I learned is that I'm taking the flash and I, the thread's hanging down on the opposite side of the hook and I can actually take this flash and work it around over into the position of where I want it by just tracing the thread up over the top. So it's right where I want it and then I can just secure that in so that it lays on the side of the hook right there. Go back. So uh, there's it on this side. Now I'll do it on the opposite side so you see it a little better. I can take this thread and move it right up to where I want it. I'm going to trim that out. It's getting in my way. You see how I just laid that in there and now I can just trap that thread. So basically I got big X right on the side of the hook of the fly like that of my, my flash. So that worked out pretty good. I'll trim that up in a little bit after I hackle it. For the hackle, I'm just going to take care of some of this. Um, it's almost a Cree, but not quite. It's a little bit more on the darker side of, of a Cree hackle, but it gives a real buggy. The legs kind of sprawling out. You know, it's on top of the water, trying to uh, swim or hold, get a hold of something before it flies off. So it's just basically a, uh, a, a grizzly variant fly. And I'm going to test, just pull one of these uh, feathers off without ripping them off of the hackle, off of the neck here. And I'll try to size it up. Now remember, this is a size 14 fly. So, I mean, size 14 hook, and I'm tying a size 12 fly. So I'm going to actually need to go a little bit larger on my hackle. Plus, that supports the fly as it goes through the water. Let's see how this one looks. That looks pretty doggone good right there. That's, that's what I want. And to prepare the feather, I'm going to just sit there and clean it off and tie it in by the stem right here. And I'm tying it in wet style so that means basically the hackle is going to go to the back of the hook instead of forward like a dry fly would where you want it to support the fly and go up on the water you have to be really careful here not to uh, I'm going to go in and trim off my stem from my hackle here but you got to be really careful because you don't want to trim off these legs so this gets a little tricky All right, and now I'll take my hackle pliers. It looks like a mess, but hang with me. It'll all come together here. Only about two, three turns is all I need in here. These are basically going to be outriggers for the fly when it's said and done. That's it. So I just tie that off. One trap wrap behind the hackle. And I'm going to come in front, put in some wraps in front of the hook. That's why it's really nice to leave all this waste on the front of here. I can control it and pull it out of the way I want to go to do my whip finish here. One, two, three, four. And no head cement, because when you put head cement in on CDC, it just sucks it all right in there and it takes away some of the abilities of it. Now I'm going to work my scissors in to remove, first off, this hackle that was left in there. Find the stem, gets a little hard, and then just trim that off. That's out of the way. 
Now I'm going to come in the front with all this butts and all this waist. Careful not to, to sit there and, and, and cut those off and cut a little head just like you would on an elk hair caddis on the front. Right there, just like that. So basically that's the front part of the fly right there. Now I'll go through and even up all my, my antenna in the front. It'll be about a half inch sticking out in front. And then I'll do probably about maybe three-eighths of an inch in the back from the wing. So I sit there and that'll give it the sparkle and flash that we like. And so right there, that's... And now, for the last step of the fly, I'm going to come into the bottom here and trim out parallel to the hook shank all that hackle because I want this to sit in the water like a low rider. So basically that just cleans that all out. So there it is. That's the CDC Yellow Sally.